A steam plant using a Castle Steam boiler part 13. This is the first steam test of the almost complete steam plant. There's still some work to do, I'm waiting for some globe valves to arrive. And also a whistle valve which will be fitted to the turret, complete with a 3 8 of an inch diameter whistle on top of the valve. To accommodate this whistle valve I will need to machine the turret. I think it's time for a steam test. Here I'm removing the cap from the displacement lubricator and filling it with steam oil. And I'm trying really hard not to dribble the steam oil on the condenser underneath. As the displacement lubricator is cold and the oil is very thick and gloopy, it takes a while to get it to sink to the bottom. Time to replace the cap and we're just about ready to go. Not forgetting to open the oil regulation valve. I opened it one turn. The gas burners have been lit for a while. All I need to do now is temporarily fit a piece of silicone rubber tubing between the valve on the boiler and the inlet to the displacement lubricator. Once I did that and opened the steam valve on top of the boiler, the engine burst into life. If you look at the pressure gauge, you will see that there is hardly any pressure at all in the boiler. But the engine's happily running quite well. I'll turn it round so you can get a better look at it. There's a bit of a dribble from one of the drain cocks, which is nothing new. I tightened it up a bit, but it still dribbled slightly. Such is the way of things. In no time at all, with very low gas pressure and no howling, the boiler was blowing off. This is an excellent boiler. But then again, I would expect nothing less from a company like Castle Steam. The first thing to do before I go any further is to see if the hand pump works, and yes it does. I turned down the gas pressure to stop the safety valves from blowing off, and here I'm just lubricating the moving parts. And now I can give the engine a proper run to see what it is capable of doing. Initially, when I moved the hand pump's handle back and forth, it didn't feel good because the pipes were full of air. Normally, I would have used the hand pump to fill the boiler, but there was already sufficient water in there to start with. And it's a good indication of the quality of these pumps made by Chris at CME Engineering that they will pump air against boiler pressure. In no time at all, though, the air in the pipe was replaced by water from the water bottle and everything was fine. For this application I selected a hand pump with a larger ram than usual. I filled the boiler almost to the top of the water gauge and even with the gas pressure still turned down, in no time at all these twin burners heated the water in the boiler and there was enough steam to run the engine, about 30 pounds per square inch here. Normally I'd stop talking and let you hear the engine but it's so quiet there's nothing to hear really. There's a bit of a blow past the valve, I'll look at that in the next episode. But for the moment, I'm just testing that it works. I can see one or two problems with both the piston rod and the valve rod gland packing. Again, I will look at this in the next episode. For now, though, I'm just going to run the engine like this and see what happens. As far as steam engines go, this is a really well-made example of a miniature steam engine. And as you can see, it works very smoothly and quite perfectly. The only thing I'm not really happy with is the metals that it's made from. It looks to me like the connecting rods, the main steam cylinder and the valve chest are machined from pieces of aluminium bar stock. But it seems to run OK and it's never going to be used to drive anything. It's just going to be almost a static glass case model. But form must follow function, so it has to work before it gets put in the glass case. And also, I'm sure that the owner will play with it from time to time and steam it up like this. Here's a close-up shot of the piston rod gland, and as you can clearly see in this clip, a lot of water is escaping. I'm not even sure whether or not this gland is packed with anything. Despite that leaking, and as I mentioned, also the valve spindle gland is leaking, the engine still runs OK. There's a bit of a sizzle around the exhaust outlet, but this is nothing, it's inconsequential. The main thing is, the engine runs very smoothly indeed and very slowly. I can actually hear a slight blow on the slide valve. This means that the slide valve is not being held to the port face as firmly as it should be. One problem with an engine like this is the boiler is currently giving 50 pounds per square inch but to have the valve turn right down on the steam outlet. 
This engine would run far too fast if I opened the valve. I'll open it and have a look. I'm simulating a load on the pulley with my hand. When I let go, the engine starts to go even faster. A normal problem with engines like this that are beautifully made is the engineering in certain areas is too good. As an educated guess, I would say that the slide valve is too tight a fit on the driving block, which is very common. I think this engine looks really good when it's running about this speed. The governor's spinning quite fast, but it's not doing much governing, and everything looks really nice. There's still 50 psi on the clock. The pressure in the boiler is almost constant. And thankfully, my carbon monoxide alarm remains silent. No carbon monoxide problem, so yes, very good. It would appear that this steam plant is going to be fine for running indoors. Provided, of course, that the windows and doors are open. Just a bit of common sense, health and safety. Here I'm having a look at the valve timing. And the valve timing is actually slightly late, but the engine isn't knocking, so I think I'll leave it that way. In fact, I think I'll stop talking. I will end the narration here and just leave the steam plant in steam to the end of the video. I'd just like to say stay safe, stay well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.